In this video, I'm thinking through three different frames to think about cost-benefit analysis and policy analysis, and in particular, how those frames relate to enacting justice in the world. And the reason I'm doing this is I just finished a book, which I highly recommend, called Automating Inequality. It's by Virginia Eubanks. It brings up a lot of points that people who are thinking about automation really need to be considering. And it focuses on the automation of social services like healthcare and housing and social work. However, I was thinking through how should my students think about the place of this book in their lives and their economic analyses. And I think this book has an important role, but it doesn't fill every role. Now, the book really focuses on the risks and downsides of automation. It gives a lot of critiques, many of which are incredibly important to think about. But artificial intelligence is a tool, and just like every other tool, it can be used either for good or for evil. So here's an overview of where I'm going. So here's the three different frames that I think we need to keep distinct when we think about cost-benefit analysis and policy analysis. The top frame is the dictator of the world frame. And that obviously is sort of what would be the best possible system, the most just system. And in this video, I'm gonna be thinking about sort of national policy, but all three of these frames really apply even within a company where you have the CEO making policy or within an organization. There's lots of different ways this could be applied. The bottom level of analysis here, I'm going to call the elicitor of experience. And that's the role that I think this author did really well. And that is essentially pulling together the experiences of the people who live underneath a system. The stakeholders. How do they feel? What are their grievances? What are the injustices they experience? You need someone who listens to them carefully and gets that information to the people at the top with power who are making decisions so that those people can appropriately account for the justices and injustices that they're doing. And then the middle role, I'm going to call the on the street bureaucrat. And this is the person who's inside the system and has a little bit of power. So this could be the social worker, it could be the nurse, it could be the healthcare administrator, where they have a budget, they have a certain number of people who work under them, and they have to use what's been given to them in their little role in the most just way possible, accounting for the stakeholders who are affected by them, which isn't the whole system, it's, it's just a subset of the system. But there's not going to be any system that you can come up with that doesn't rely on people acting just in these mid-level bureaucrat roles. And as a matter of fact, I mean, in reading the book, I was thinking about my students who are going to go on to be healthcare administrators and are going to be making decisions about artificial intelligence. I think this book would be a great thing for them to read. But they, they need to read the book as one perspective and also consider the idea that artificial intelligence could be used to improve justice. Okay, now I'm going to go through each of those levels to think about the ways that economists or people doing cost-benefit analysis can consider justice in those roles. Now, the dictator of the world role is is really important. It's sort of what are we aiming for? What would be the most just system possible? It's going to inform who we vote for. It's going to inform what policies we support, what policies we don't support. And so it's a really important thing to be thinking about. But there's some caveats here. And one of the caveats and one of the arguments I'd like to make in this video is that given that our students are going to embody this mid-level bureaucrat role when they graduate, they can't only be focused on the dictator of the world. We tend to have a lot of activities and thought experiments that let students be the dictator of the world, which is fun and important. But if somebody embodies a street level bureaucrat role and their focus is mainly on the overall system, they may not do a good job of enacting justice with the actual power they've been given. Now, I will say one possible best way of handling a street level bureaucrat role is to say the system is so unjust that the best way for me to embody this role is a destructive one. It is to sort of cause chaos so that the system collapses and we have to start over. It's possible for systems to get corrupt enough where that is the actual best thing to do. But the street level bureaucrat does have people and stakeholders 
under their care and under their power. And your job is to weigh the costs and benefits of those different stakeholders against one another and to do that justly. If you're not thinking about the stakeholders you're in charge of, then you are a source of injustice. So I think it's really important for students to imagine themselves embodying these mid-level bureaucrat roles and thinking about how can I personally, if I were in one of these limited roles, act as justly as possible with the power I'm given. So the dictator of the world role, most of us will never embody those roles, but we get to vote on the people who do. And one of the risks with people in the roles where they're enacting actual policy from the top down, where they're creating the structure of the system, one of the risks is that they don't listen very well to people who are actually experiencing the policies that they're enacting. And that's why it's important for these people, as they're doing their own cost-benefit analyses, to listen well and to be in close contact with people who are the elicitors of experience. Because that's where their objective function comes from. When we do cost-benefit analysis, we have some sort of social welfare function, some sort of objective function. And that social welfare function is responsible to the people it's in charge of. And that means you need to be listening really well to those people. Because of course we know that policies have unintended consequences. And it's a strong temptation of people in power to turn a blind eye to the negative consequences of things they're doing with their power. That's, that's just a natural human thing. As a matter of fact, I would even say the definition of a good leader is someone who can listen well to all of the people who are affected by their leadership, including the people who have critiques, who say they're doing something wrong, who say they have negative experiences because of that leadership. Now, the dictator of the world has some weird things to deal with. One is that when you enact policy, you know there might be unintended consequences, but you don't know if there's problems that can be solved. Because most policies, you put them out there, and there's a bunch of holes and problems to plug in the first couple of years. It's a lot like when technologies are new, they tend to have a lot of bugs, and the early adopters of those technologies know that, they report the bugs, and there's kind of this back and forth um, plugging the holes in the ship that you just let loose until the ship can actually not sink. And so you need that period of time of fixing the problems with any policy. And the best way to do that, of course, is to have a good ear for the people who are actually experiencing the technology or the policy. You also have to make a judgment call. At what point are the holes too big such that you're not going to wait for, for the system to get better, but you're going to say, you know what? we made a mistake, too many people are negatively affected by this. So those are just some things that people have to think about if they embody the dictator of the world role. All right, so what about the bottom rung of these frames that we might look at when we're looking at cost benefit and policy analysis? And I think there is a role for economists in the elicitor of experience frame. But economists are not the main people I think of when I think of that frame. I think of people like journalists and sociologists and researchers who do qualitative research who listen carefully to the people most affected by any given policy. I will get to how do economists play a role, but first let's think about these people. Um, essentially, these people are the line of communication between the general populace and the people in power, the people making decisions. And having that line of communication that has integrity, has honesty, has truth, where the people feel like they're being heard by those in power, the people feel that their grievances are accurately represented, they feel that the qualitative researchers and journalists listening to them are not using them for an agenda of some sort. There needs to be trust and integrity going from the people experiencing the policy to the people making the decisions, to the people putting together the objective function that will be involved in the stakeholder analysis or cost-benefit analysis. So how do economists come in here? 
Well, okay, economists are good with data. So if you have, say, a really good journalist or really good qualitative researcher listening to people's stories and accurately representing their experience, you need to know how common is this experience? Is this something that a broad spectrum of the population experiences? Or is this experience kind of unique to this particular situation? Because, of course, cost-benefit, you're weighing different populations needs against each other, you're thinking through trade-offs, so you need to know how common different grievances are. And economists can play a role by putting some numbers to that kind of thing. If economists are doing a good job at the elicitor of experience role, they're going to be listening carefully to sociologists and qualitative researchers who have a more direct version of the story, but economists can kind of quantify that so that it'll be easier for people in the dictator of the world role to do a better cost-benefit analysis um, to put together a more just social welfare function. And I think this book, Automating Inequality, does a really good job at this role. It, it listens to people's experience with automation, and it thinks through some of the more broad implications. Now, finally, the on-the-street bureaucrats. This is the role that most college students need to prepare for. It's the kind of role where you will actually have potential to enact justice or injustice. And there's a lot of similarities in the responsibility of this person to the dictator of the world. This person is managing scarce resources, they have some amount of power, and they have a responsibility to be listening to the stakeholders who are affected by their decision making. It's just not the whole system, it's just a subset of those people. How do you listen to those people? Well, some of it is probably on your own. On the street bureaucrats do tend to hear a lot of stories from people. They tend to understand the people who are under their care in a deeper way than many. And they also have a responsibility to be in touch with people who specialize in understanding the experiences. It is important for students to prepare for that kind of role where you have very strong limitations, very strong budgets. If students get in the habit of their perspective being, I don't have enough money to do a good job of what I'm doing, or I need more from the dictator of the world, I need more power, I need more people under me, I need more resources, that focus can sometimes take you away from the important job of doing justice with what you have. Students should be able to advocate for themselves. They should be able to advocate for more money, more power, more people under them. Because if they're in one of these roles where they're an on-the-street bureaucrat, they're probably doing good in the world, or at least have the potential to do good in the world. But the advocating for more from above needs to not overshadow the cost-benefit exercise of enacting justice for the people under your care doing the best you can with the resources you're given for the people that you have power over. That takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and it's just really important to make sure your focus stays on those people because like any role of power, it can be really easy to lose sight of those who have negative consequences from your choices in the cost-benefit analysis. You don't want to look at those people. You'd rather just not think about them if they're under your care and they're experiencing something negative. But there is a moral responsibility to do that. That's kind of the argument of this video. And I think when economic students do papers on cost-benefit analyses, on economic justice and how you enact that. I think it's really important to think through these three frames and to make sure that you're preparing yourself to do a good job even if you're not dictator of the world, even if the power you're given has limits. So I think that's enough for this video. I hope you found this helpful in thinking through justice and cost-benefit analysis and different frames for using power justly in the world.